home brew. We're basically conducting an enormous experiment on our children. Marketplace tests home cleaning products. Here they're saying to spray where kids are, to use routinely. Is that a good idea? Well, that's something that the, the parents should think about. Hi, welcome to Marketplace. I'm Erica Johnson in Vancouver. We seem to be a society obsessed with keeping our homes clean. We want our bathrooms and our kitchens hospital grade disinfected. Cleaning products promise miracles, faster, easier, better results, less scrubbing. But could it be our clean freak streak is actually harming our kids? Here's Wendy Mesley with the story. Sean Ellis is hunting for something. Something in this house that's invisible. In the air, maybe. It could be the house. We're not sure. Something that could explain why this family keeps getting sick. In the past year, I found that I was getting really stuffed up and I developed bronchitis. It doesn't seem to be getting better. It just seems to be getting worse. So I want to try and find out what's going on. Amanda Saul has severe respiratory problems. Five weeks ago, she was rushed to the hospital because she couldn't breathe. I called Sean because I was having a lot of problems breathing-wise, um, and I wasn't sure if it had to do with the house, with the moles and stuff, or if it had to do with the air quality of the house, or maybe even our cleaning products. Her oldest son, Kieran, is three years old. Like so many kids these days, he suffers from allergies, eczema, and recently, asthma. It's my oldest that I'm concerned about because he has asthma, so um, anything could trigger that. So Amanda turned to Ellis, a toxicologist who's begun marketing his services to anxious homeowners. Sean tests the air in people's homes, looking to see how many chemicals or other particulate matter may be floating there. There's a growing concern about uh, the connection between people's health and their indoor environment. Sean tests for all kinds of things, mold, moisture, and more and more, he's testing for chemicals. Some of my clients using cleaners, um, especially if it's a combination of cleaners, can actually make them dizzy or, or have headaches. What he's talking about are cleaning products, like the ones Amanda and her husband use every day. Many of them contain chemicals. I think the majority of the awareness uh, of cleaning products in people's homes are that a cleaning product is, is natural and safe. Um, I don't think people consider cleaning products chemicals. And this young family likes their cleaners as much as anyone else. It is very seductive to try and get the best cleaning product out there that will actually do the job. Open wide. In your mouth, not on the floor. Speaking of seductive, check out the advertising. The come on to parents is full of babies and young children looking adorable and oh so vulnerable. It's a parent's job to keep them free from germs. So, say the ads, spray that change table with Lysol, clean that high chair with disinfecting wipes, and don't forget to mop those floors before putting baby down to play. Last year, Canadians spent over $275 million on household cleaning products. They're appealing to the fear of danger for their children and, want, and the desire to, to keep them safe. Lysol spray kills 99.9% .9 of germs. Kathy Cooper is a senior researcher with the Canadian Environmental Law Association. What do you think when you see that? I find it very troubling that, that um, those kinds of chemicals are being sprayed in a child's crib. I think it's unnecessary and I worry about the long-term toxicity. Cooper says there's a lot we don't know about the chemicals in our cleaners because companies are not required to tell us. For cleaning products in particular, the only thing the label will tell you is that issue of is it seriously toxic? If you swallow it. If you swallow it or get in your eye or you know will the container blow up or whatever if you puncture it. Um, but you don't have any information about chronic toxicity long-term toxicity. In Vancouver, Larry Stoffman is an international expert on chemical hazards information. 
We're talking about children that are exposed to these products in the home and they're exposed to these products on a 24-hour day basis. Um, we're also talking about hazardous ingredients that can have effects at very tiny, tiny levels of exposure. You never know and you're never sure is, you know, what level is a safe level and that assumption shouldn't be made. Ever look at the label of your favorite floor cleaner or furniture polish? There's not much on it. That's because companies are protected by trade secrets. If you do find an ingredient, it's there because it could blow up or poison you. Many other chemicals are not even listed. If you had the kind of labeling laws, for instance, they have in Europe, where it would tell you that this product contains something that may cause cancer, for example, and another similar product that does the same job doesn't, you might not buy the product that contains the carcinogen. If you didn't, then the market would determine what manufacturers put in their products. We're basically conducting an enormous experiment on our children and our children's children. Sean Ellis is testing the air in parts of the house where cleaners are stored. He's measuring volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. His meter does not tell you how strong or harmful the chemical particles might be. All it does is provide clues as to how many particles there are. You can always smell those cleaners, even though they're all tightly sealed. Sure enough, everywhere the cleaning products are kept, the readings jump. We asked Sean to test three of the products we saw in the commercials. The average home normally reads about 50 parts per billion. Let's see what happens with the pledge. 273 parts per billion. According to Sean, anything over 500 could be a problem for sensitive people. What about Clorox wipes? So again, a simple wipe and the levels jump up from the hundreds into the thousands here. And finally, the Lysol disinfecting spray. We're now in the parts per million as opposed to the parts per billion. So you're looking at about 12,000. That's about a thousand times higher than the Clorox. I'm cleaning the counters, but am I doing something opposite where I'm affecting my kids' respiratory problems? We live in an increasingly chemical society. Experts don't know how dangerous these chemicals might be, but they are starting to worry. Dr. Gideon Corrin is a pediatrician at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto. How can we, as a, one of the most advanced countries in the world, allow these to enter our household for small children without the appropriate testing to see that it's safe? Dr. Corrin says young children are especially vulnerable, partly because of exposure. Everything goes into their mouths, and they virtually live on the floor. But also, young kids are more sensitive because they're still developing the basic body systems, the brain, the internal organs, the respiratory and immune systems. Even the reproductive system is not fully developed until adolescence. We got a call just last week from a supervisor in a daycare center. They said, well, we've been using some different cleaning chemicals in our daycare. And suddenly, not only the staff, but the children are complaining of, of, of problems. And they wanted to know what was in the cleaning products. There are no resources in this country for people like that to turn to. Hmm, what is this? Dr. Corrin and a researcher are conducting a study. They're looking at the babies of mothers who were exposed to chemical solvents in the workplace. This mother worked in the packaging area of a chemical plant that produces pesticides and fertilizers for commercial use. Baby Jenna is having her vision tested. We don't know her results yet, but research on other kids is in. So you're finding that vision is affected in some of these fetuses, babies. Um, what does that indicate? What does that mean? Well, of course, vision is one of the functions of the human brain. So it means that these chemicals find themselves through mom, through the umbilical cord, into the baby, into the developing brain, and damaging functions there. And the baby is born already with a problem. Wipe this off. Jenna's mom was at least warned she was working with toxic chemicals. Manufacturers are obliged to release toxicology data in the workplace. When these same chemicals are used in the home, the exposure is lower, but no one knows what effect they may have, and there's no obligation to inform us. 
Dr. Corrin isn't the only specialist to be increasingly concerned about what living in such a chemical society might be doing to our kids. Respiratory illness is the leading cause of admission to hospital for children. Childhood asthma has jumped 400% over the last 20 years. And after injuries, cancer is now the leading cause of death among children aged 5 to 9. There's increasing evidence of links between those kinds of chronic health effects in children and a certain range of chemicals in our environment. Can you smell? Yeah. So we went to see a chemist, Dr. Virginia Solaris. She's an indoor air quality expert. And we asked her, what's in some of these products being marketed to young families? This is one product we're looking at, Lysol Antibacterial Action. It does actually list ingredients, ethanol, 79%. And not just any ethanol, says Solaris, it's denatured ethanol. She's put together a book for us full of data sheets which list the hazards of specific chemicals in the workplace. Again, there's nothing like this available on the effect of these chemicals when used in the home. Here's what Solaris discovered about denatured ethanol. May cause irritation of eyes and mucous membranes, may cause central nervous system depression if inhaled or ingested. So, we now know everything that's in the Lysol, do you no. think? No, there's more? Yep, says Solaris. There's also alkyl dimethyl benzyl ammonium chloride. This is a class of compounds that uh, act as a disinfectant hmm. or biocide. Which means it's a pesticide. It's harmful by inhalation, ingestion, and through skin contact. So we've learned that in this can, there are products that can cause skin irritation or irritation to the lung, even neurological implications. And yet here they're saying to, you know, spray where kids are, uh, to use it every day or at least use routinely. Is that a good idea? Well, that's something that the, the parents should think about. Do they want to, to spray the air that uh, people are breathing or the kids, the, the toys or surfaces that they children are touching, do they want them sprayed? Okay, now this is Clorox disinfecting wipes. Uh, it's for, it says to wipe surfaces throughout the house, kitchen and bathroom. Uh, play pens. It lists uh, two products, dimethyl benzyl ammonium chloride and dimethyl ethyl benzyl ammonium chloride. Again, like in the Lysol, more pesticides with possible harmful effects. If you find that it has an ingredient which is a chemical, you can't even pronounce it, you don't know what it is, you don't know how it can affect you, I think it's about time you think, should I be using this? Now here is another product, this is Pledge. There's no ingredients listed at all. Again, Dr. Solaris has done her homework. It has silicones and it has butane gas like in a lighter <laughs> yes and propane like in the barbecue exactly so what do they do butane and propane maybe harmful if inhaled eye irritant and narcotic meaning it can affect your brain and then there's the uh, the glass cleaners what's in them some of them have what are called glycol ethers there's concern over these products because uh, for workers who are exposed occupationally, they've been seeing some reproductive effects, and so in the semiconductor industry, they're being phased out. What about all the laundry detergents and fabric softeners? I think people assume that they're safe. Is there any cause for concern with chemicals in those? You'd be amazed at the number of chemicals that are used in um, detergents. They have chemicals to prevent the dirt from sticking back onto the clothing. They've got um, uh, chemicals to oxidize. And of course, you've got the perfumes. You may not be rinsing away all of those chemicals. What kind of exposure do you need to those chemicals before it's harmful? We don't really know. But we know at some level it can be harmful. That's right. They sure know a lot more about chemicals used outside of the home where workers have to be informed. Workers have a right to know in this country what they're working with, what they're exposed to, what the health hazards are. Stoffman helps run a watchdog group that looks out for the health and safety of workers. There's a labeling system in the workplace that has symbols for both acute and chronic hazards and statements that are supposed to warn you about those hazards. It will disclose whether it contains a carcinogen in it or a reproductive toxin or some other chronic health hazard. Um, some of these same chemicals are in consumer products. 
but there's nothing on the label like that for the consumer product. All household cleaners fall under the Hazardous Products Act, which is almost 40 years old. They are also regulated by something called the Consumer Chemicals and Containers Regulations. Labels are required to provide hazard symbols like poison and flammable, and they have to give information about first aid treatments for those ingredients. But there's no requirement to list other chemicals that could cause long-term health effects, and no warnings that say anything like may cause respiratory problems. People assume that if it's on the shelf, it's been tested, it's safe. And you can't make that assumption all the time. You, re you can't. Not with the, the, the regulatory framework that we have in place. People make that assumption because they trust the government agencies are, are actually looking after that. Yeah, and they shouldn't make that assumption with respect to the Hazardous Products Act in particular. That's a federal law that desperately needs to be updated. It only reacts to problems after they've been identified. And When people start getting sick? Sick or, or dying. I mean, the, the kinds of regulations that have been put in place have to do with uh, where children's sleepwear has caught fire or cords have gotten around their necks or, we found, or lead in the, in the paint on cribs or all of those kinds of things. Those regulations were not put in place until after serious and or fatal health problems occurred. There's some lapsus, some gap in the way we think. I would expect my government, my regulatory process, to expect such tests to be done before some sh is approved to be used where small children are growing. While Dr. Corrin's regulatory process, Health Canada sent us this email where they say the responsibility for assessing the hazards associated with a chemical product is that of the manufacturer or importer. We wanted to ask Health Canada about its role and about some of the concerns raised in this story, but they refused repeated requests for an on-camera interview. The makers of Lysol, Clorox and Pledge said they were unavailable for an interview and so did their trade association. Um, just doing a casual count, I noticed more than 10, de 10 different types of cleaners in your home. Meanwhile, back at the Sols, Sean has just finished advising Amanda to cut back on some of her cleaning products. I think I'm going to go through all of them and try and find one or two that will work. But also another way I might do it too is to try and see what natural products are out there. And if there's a demand for that, the industry will provide it. So Amanda Saul has decided to cut down on the chemicals in her home. But she'll have to figure it out on her own. For the time being, at least, the government and manufacturers are under no obligation to help her. And that's our show for this week. For Wendy Mesley and everyone at Marketplace, thanks a lot for joining us. I'm Erica Johnson in Vancouver. See you next week. Here they're saying to, you know, spray where kids are, uh, to use it every day or at least use routinely. Is that a good idea?